Welcome to this edition of the ACC Update. I'm Lisa Fletcher. With the sequencing of the human genome and further genetic research underway, there are increasing opportunities to target treatments to individuals instead of one-size-fits-all therapies. Proponents of this type of personalized medicine see potential cost savings and patient safety benefits. However, others raise concerns about the limited data available to prove these benefits and cost savings. One of the biggest hurdles to personalized medicine is that in most cases, genetic tests are not covered by private or public health plans. However, if a recent case in Indiana is any indication, the tides might be turning. In a reversal of earlier decisions, WellPoint Inc. recently said it will make an exception and pay for DNA testing for three children to see if they have the same genetic mutation for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy as their father. WellPoint had denied the family's repeated requests for the test, which is more than 99% accurate in determining which children have the gene mutation. They called it experimental and not medically necessary. Joining us by phone is Dr. Michael Miro, electrophysiologist for Parkview Physicians Group in Fort Wayne, Indiana, who initially recommended that the three children be tested. To talk more about the case and future of genetic testing, we welcome Dr. Miro. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Lisa. Tell us a little about hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and why you recommended that these kids undergo these genetic tests. Well, Lisa, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is an inherited disorder, the most commonly inherited cardiac disorder affects about one out of 500 individuals, uh, autosomal dominant, um, with a number of uh, well-identified genetic mutations um, that um, will provide the uh, underlying um, inherited basis of this disease. Uh, the, the disease typically manifests itself in early adulthood, uh, adolescence, uh, as um, the symptoms of shortness of breath, but can present with sudden death. Uh, so it's very critical to identify a family history of sudden death. And uh, as an electrophysiologist, that's my interest is preventing sudden death and that why I do see a lot of patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Um, adults with this disease can present with chest pain, uh, symptoms of what we call diastolic heart failure, or actually have syncope uh, with exercise um, and usually present with those types of symptoms or can be picked up on a physical examination by a finding of a heart murmur or if they have an insurance exam and they have an electrocardiogram, it, typically the electrocardiogram is abnormal, um, and then uh, an echocardiogram is the definitive test to make the uh, phenotypic diagnosis of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Dr. Miro, talk about what you see as some of the key benefits of genetic testing in general, and then what are some of the biggest challenges as a physician that you're facing? So, so uh, once an I, 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 individual is identified um, as having a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, the phenotypic expression, uh, testing to find the gene mutations uh, of benefit to um, uh, see if offspring uh, of that individual uh, have the gene. And uh, the benefit of that, of course, is to try to identify individuals that need uh, to be serially echoed to see if they have the phenotypic expression of the gene and try to prevent them from having um, sudden death. And so that is really the basis of um, the testing that was requested from Anthem WellPoint. Um, we know that there are two consensus documents recently published. One's through Heart Rhythm Society uh, had published a document on recommending genetic testing for certain types of inherited disorders associated with arrhythmic death and sudden death, and this hypertrophic cardiomyopathy was included in that document. It was recommended as a 1A indication for testing an affected individual, an index case, if you will, and then testing their offspring. Doctor, are there specific um, ACC and AHA guidelines governing genetic testing? Yes, and so then uh, AHA, ACC uh, put together a very prestigious consensus panel of experts who looked at uh, all the scientific data behind management of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and came out with a guideline which is based on science and it recommended that genetic testing be conducted in an affected individual or an index case and their offspring and that was a, a one a class one indication and the, the science uh, that is behind this is fairly substantial and uh, this was a critical document uh, in, in convincing the health plans that that we need to follow science um, 
in, in our decisions, particularly for coverage of uh, testing. This case has gotten a considerable amount of media attention. What do you hope is going to ultimately come out of the whole process? Well, you know, many cardiologists face these types of challenges with health plans across the country. Anthem WellPoint, unfortunately, has been the most difficult plan to deal okay. with on national level. Um, not uh, looking at the most current science behind their coverage decisions. And so uh, we attempted to educate them uh, repetitively. And finally, uh, with the exposure to the national media, um, their decisions have changed. Um, so I think it shows the benefit of um, uh, patient support groups, by the way. Uh, we're very involved with this case. Uh, my patient um, w contacted the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy support group, who then um, really created the media um, coverage of the lack of coverage for testing for his children. And uh, when we actually identified the gene in the patient already, uh, so the, the media coverage did help uh, enlighten the administrators uh, that were outside the uh, small group of managers that were controlling the coverage decision. And I, I believe that that's really what turned the tide is, is lobbying in the best interest of patients. And my approach to the, the media and also Anthem was this is about sudden death in children um, in, in about science. And, in, in, uh, you know, obviously their decision prior to that was driven by uh, money. Uh, and so uh, once it was crafted, uh, the science around it, and they were enlightened, and then also the fact that the, the compelling reason to do this is prevent sudden death in adolescent children, then, uh, then they were able to... Uh, to revise their decision. Doctor, last question, and you just touched on it a bit. It seems like personalized medicine and genetic testing are really the way of the future. Do you have any advice to other cardiovascular professionals in terms of working with health plans and patients or other stakeholders on these issues? Well, I, I think, you know, looking at the science behind this, and, and there are many genetic experts that, uh, that available to the ACC, who are a lot more knowledgeable than, than I as a clinician. Um, different diseases have different sensitivity and specificities of these tests. So uh, depending on the disease, the, the sensitivity and specificity may, may not be that high. So lobbying to test the individual and their offspring may not have as much science behind it. And uh, we have to be careful not to, um, you know, promote testing in every disease, but most of the inherited diseases that are associated with sudden death, there's excellent uh, science behind the testing and the sensitivity and specificity. And if a mutation is identified, then the sensitivity and specificity in that individual um, is extremely high. Uh, so in other words, the offspring of someone with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, when the mutation is identified, the, the testing has a 99% sensitivity and specificity. So I, I think the health plans need to be held accountable for their coverage decisions. And we, as clinicians lobbying in the interest of our patients, have to be very aggressive uh, not to let go and to, to utilize the expertise of our professional society who, who have published uh, documents demonstrating the value of this testing. Dr. Michael Miro, thanks so much for taking some time with us today. Thank you. That's all for this edition of the ACC Update. Be sure to check Cardiosource.org for more information about this story and all of the latest from your college. I'm Lisa Fletcher. Thanks for watching.